This is Dr. D. Kalandar Basha working as Associate Professor in the Department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Dundigar, Hyderabad. Today I am going to discuss the interfacing of USA-RT for transmitting and receiving of data through program. So where USA-RT stands for Universal Synchronous Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. The slides are prepared by referring the textbook Advanced Microprocessor and Peripherals, authors A.K. Ray and Burchandi, publication Tata Megra. The problem statement for USART is design the hardware interface circuit for interfacing 8251 with 8086. Set the 8251A in asynchronous mode as transmitter and receiver with even parity enabled, two stop bits, 8 bit character length, frequency 160 kilohertz and baud rate of 10k. Write an ALP to transmit 100 bytes of data starting at location 2000 colon 5000 h. The second problem, write an ALP to receive 100 bytes of data string and store it at 3000 colon 4000 h. So here we have two problems. So one is writing a program for transmitting of data which is 100 bit size with the given specification. The data is available at segment address is 2000 and offset is 5000 H. The second program is for receiving of 100 bytes of data. After receiving the data, we have to store the data at segment address 3000 and offset 4000 H. For given few specifications like 8251 is in asynchronous mode. The second one is given as the parity enable and the type of parity is given parity. The number of stop bits are 2. The data size is 8 bit. The frequency is 160 kilohertz and baud rate is 10 kilo, 10k. So the fraction here you can say 160k divided by 10k which will give us as 16x which is asynchronous mode. The figure shows the interfacing of USRT8251 with 8086. The data is transmitted through USART on the line TXT. And when you are receiving the data, the data is received on the line RXT. The clock frequency it is given as 160 kilohertz. So for RXA, that is receiver clock pulse and the transmitter clock pulse is connected to a frequency generator of 160 kilohertz. Next, for programming the 8251, we have to configure few registers as well as the processor can read the status register. So the data transfer will be takes place on this data bus. The chip select in the problem it is given for enabling for A, A2 to A7. This is some interfacing circuit or decoding mechanism for enabling the chip select. IO read operation, IO write operation, reset and clock signals. These are necessary signals which are required for interfacing. So first for configuring 8251 we have two programs. One is receiver part, the transmitter part. The second one is receiving the data. So the data which is stored in a memory location, this data we are going to be transmit through TXT line. Whereas in the receiving, the data will be received on RXT line and this data will be stored in a memory location which is given with offset and segment address. For 8251 programming, Total we have three registers. One is mode instruction control register. The second one is command instruction control word. 
the third one is status register the mode instruction control word as well as command instruction control word these two will be written by 8086 so 8086 will configure this so for these two registers we have write permissions we have to configure by using out instruction whereas for status register the status register can read by 8086 processor here we have only read permission we can't write any data to the status register so in this problem statement these registers address i am giving with a generalized name depending upon which address lines we are selecting for interfacing depending upon that we have to pass the address the first one is write an alp to transmit 100 bytes of data string starting location 2000 colon 5000 the specifications they are given is 8251 is configured in asynchronous mode even parity enabled two stop bits the data size is eight character length the frequency and baud rate we are having 16 cross 16 factor it is there that is 160 kilohertz divided by 10k which will give us as 16 is to 1 so that asynchronous mode first we have to configure the mode instruction register in the mode instruction register the last two bits will define what is the baud rate if it is synchronous communication a zero zero if it is asynchronous communication and the frequency versus baud rate if it is 1x then we have to write these two bits as 0 1 if it is 16x we have to write these bits as 1 0 if it is 64 bits we have to write these two bits as 1 1 so as per specifications we are having the ratio between the frequency and baud rate as 16 plus 1 so these two bits are selected as 1 and 0 the next two bits are corresponding to what is the size of data so if l2 l1 if you configure these two bits as 0 0 the size of data which we are transmitting is 5 bits for 6 bit 0 1 for 7 bits 1 0 for 8 bits 1 1 so in the specifications it is given 8 bit character so we are going to select the l1 l2 values as 1 1 the next bit is corresponding to whether the parity is enabled or disabled so in the problem statement it is given as parity is enabled and the type of parity is even parity so we are going to configure this bit as one for enabling the parity so whenever the parity bit is enabled then we have to choose either it is even parity or odd parity as per problem statement it is given as even parity so we are going to configure this bit as one for even parity the last two bits are for indicating how many number of stop bits are required so as in the specifications it is given two stop bits so 0 0 is for invalid 0 1 is for one bit 1 0 is for one and a half bit 1 1 is for two bits as per problem statement we require two stop bits so we have to configure the last two bits as one one so the value which we have to write for this mode instruction register is msb is 1 1 followed by this is a, this bit d5 bit is 1 d4 bit also 1 l2 l1 are 1 1 for 8 bit data b2 b1 are for 1 0 for asynchronous 16 cross x so the value which we are going to be pass here the value is 1 1 1 1 one 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 zero in the binary format in the hexa format we can take this one as one 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 which is f one 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 zero it is fe so we have to write the feh for mode instruction register so this is the values for each and every bit for configuring mode instruction register the value which we are going to write is in the binary format one 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 zero whereas for in the hexadecimal format 
the value here it is feh the next register we have to configure it is it's command instruction register in the command instruction register for transmitting we have to enable the transmitter enable as it is not with respect to modem DTR it is for data terminal ready through modem so this bit is don't care we are taking only transmission part so the receiver enabling is not required send break characters not required for sending the break characters zero this error flags either you can reset or you can leave it so either you can pass this one as zero or one RTS as we are not interfacing the modem, so we have to disable this. IR reset also, internal reset also we have to disable. Enabling the hunt character is not specified, so we will take this bit is also equal to 0. So the value which we can write for command instruction register is 0, 0, 0, x, 0, 0, 0. We have to enable the transmitter, so this bit is 1. So this is a don't care. If I want to clear the errors, I'll pass 1. If I don't want to clear the errors, I'll pass 0. So, you'll take 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. This will make the transmitter enable and errors will not be reset. If you select this bit as 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, this bit configuration makes the transmitter enable and it will clear error flags. So it is better to clear always error flags. So we are going to write the command instruction word as 0001001 which is equivalent to 11H in the hexadecimal. So the value which we are going to write for mode instruction control word is 0001001 in the binary format. In the hexadecimal, we will get this one as 11H. Now we will start the programming. So first, we have to request assembler for code segment by using the assembler directive assume. Assume CS colon code, the start of code segment by code segment. Then start of the program with the start label. The first we are going to write these two addresses. These are the memory location as it is a, a data segment. We have two values. One is 2000 colon 5000. 2000 is segment address. 5000 is offset. The segment address as it is a data segment, we are going to move into DS register. This offset value we are going to be placed in an index register SF. For loading 2000 directly into the data segment is not possible. So first we will write the immediate data 2000H into AX register. From the AX register we will move into data segment register. So the first instruction we will write as move AX comma 2000H. This AX contents will be loaded into DS register by using move instruction. The next instruction we will write as move ds, comma, ax. So these two instructions are for making the data segment register loaded with 2000H. The next one is this 5000H we have to load into index register that is SI. So for that we will write the instruction is move SI, comma, 5000H. Now we are loaded the memory addresses of the data which we want to transmit into the corresponding DSSI pair. Next, for configuring 825, 8251, that is USA RT, we have to write mode instruction control word first. Before that, here we want to pass 100 bytes. So, the number of bytes which we want to transmit is 100 bytes in the decimal. In the hexadecimal, it is 64H. So, this we are going to load into a CX register. So, move CX comma 64H. This will give us how many number of data which you are going to be transmitted. Next, for configuring mode instruction register, 
the value for mode instruction is fv for mode instruction register we have to load with feh so for this first we will load feh into al register by using move instruction move al comma feh this data we want to pass to the register mode instruction register of 8251 so that we use instruction out instruction so i am going for a label kind of thing because address is not specified i am putting a generalized one so out mode instruction address so this depend upon the decoding circuit we have to pass the corresponding address for mode instruction register the al contents are loaded into mode instruction register the second step is we have to configure the command instruction register for configuring the command instruction register command instruction register we have to write this one as 11h as we have seen in the earlier value this is 11h for command instruction control word whereas fe is for mode instruction control word so these two values we are updating next for writing the 11h into command instruction control word first we will load al with 11h by using move instruction move al comma 11h this 11h will be passed for a register which is command instruction control word by using the out instruction so out command instruction address comma al so here we have to replace with the corresponding address value as per interfacing how we are doing right so these two steps are done one is pointer to a memory mode instruction register configuration command instruction register configuration is done then we have to check whether the transmitter is enabled or not for checking the transmitter is enabled or not we have to read the status register so this status register the lsb value is for transmitter enable the remaining bits are corresponding to other activities so for transmission we have to check whether this bit is 1 or 0 if the lsb bit is 1 it indicates the transmitter is ready so that we can transmit the data if it is 0 if the transmitter is enabled bit is 0 it indicates the transmitter is not ready in that case go for reading status register again until the transmitter is ready we are going to keep on putting in a loop for reading the status register checking this lsp so first we want to read the status register the instruction which we use is in instruction in al comma a status a register address so what are the status register content is there that it is copied into AL register for this status register we are interested for LSB so for checking this bit whether it is 1 or 0 we will shift this contents towards right side by 1 bit otherwise we can go for ANDing with 01H both activities you can do one is ANDing with 01H then if after ANDing this if the result is 0 it indicates the transmitter is not ready if it is non-zero then the transmitter is ready the other thing you can do is you can shift the contents towards right side by one bit for checking the transmitter ready status the al contents will be handed with 01h for checking only lsb so the remaining bits will make as 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 so when you add any bit with the zero it is going to return a zero value the last bit we are adding with one so this bit will be retained same as that of the transmitter enable so if the al contains after adding with zero one if it is zero it indicates the transmitter is not ready so again we go for looping to reading the status register that is label l1 so here we will check for jz if after adding al contains with 01h if al is equal to 00h then it indicates the transmitter is not ready 
So when the transmitter is not ready, then again go for a reading a status register. Suppose if it is non-zero, that indicates the transmitter is ready. So go for transmit data. So JZL1. So what is JZ means? If Z flag is equal to 0, Z flag is equal to 1. After ending with a 0, 0, if the result is 0, 0, then Z flag is 1. So in that case, go for loop 1. That is reading a status register. So this loop will be iterated until the transmitter is ready. Once the transmitter is ready, it will come out of the loop. So when the transmitter is ready, then we can read the data from the transmitter by using the in instruction. So, so for transmitting the data, first the data we have to load into AL register using move AL comma SI. So whatever the data it is there AL that we can transmit. So the instruction which you use for transmitting is out transmit address comma AL. So as one data is transferred from the first location for moving to the next location we had to increment the pointer si that is increment si as one data is transferred we are going to decrement the count that is decrement cx this transmission has to be takes place for 100 times because 100 bytes we want to transmit. So this we will check whether the CX is 0 or not. So initially CX is 100 which is equal to 64H. Right. If CX is equal to 0, it indicates entire data transmission done. If CX is non-zero, that indicates data transmission not completed. When the transmission is not completed, go for checking again the transmitter, either it is ready for transmitting the second data. So here we will check the CX register whether it is zero or not. So here we are interested for non-zero because when it is non-zero, I want to go for a reputation. So here you will write the instruction JNJ loop one. So what is loop one? It is for again read the status register for checking the transmitter is ready or not. If the transmitter is ready, go for transmitting. So this loop will be iterated 100 number of times. Once the transmission of 100 bits are done, then we can terminate the program by calling INT21H. Before that, we will load AH with 4CH, INT21H. We can end the code segment by using the directive code endes. To end the program, we use the directive end start. So this is a program for transmission of 100 bytes of data from the given location with the specified specifications. Now we will see the program, entire program in two slides. Assume CS colon code, code segment, start, move AX comma 2000, move DS comma AX, move SI comma 5000. So this is for placing a pointer to memory where the data is present, move CX comma 64H because 100 bytes of data we want to transmit. Then this is for configuring mode instruction register. After configuring the mode instruction register, then we have to configure control command instruction. command instruction a register with 11H. Once these two are configured, then we go for reading the status register. Read status register. The purpose of checking whether the transmitter is enabled or not. So for checking this, we are going to add the AL contents with one. JJ go for loop one. That means it is not ready. So this is for checking whether the transmitter is ready or not. For checking the status of the transmitter, whether it is ready or not for transmission, we are going to use this instruction. This loop will be iterated until 
the transmitter is ready when the transmitter is ready copy data from memory to register this is first data then this data will be transmitted once the data is transmitted one data is completed so for moving to the next memory location increment si as one data transaction is done decrement the count so this loop has to be iterated for 100 number of times so for that we are going to use j n z l1 if cx is non zero that means still some more data has to be transmitted if cx is equal to zero it indicates the entire transmission is done so we can terminate the program by using int 21h then we can end the program by ending the segment code enders and end stop The second problem is write an ALP to receive 100 bytes of data starting from the location 3000 to 4000. So after receiving the data we want to load at the address 3000 colon 4000. So whatever the data which you are receiving on RxD line that it will be stored in this memory locations. So this memory 3000H as it is a a data segment so this will be loaded into the data segment register 4000 we will point with the source index register s yes. the given specifications are the receiver is in asynchronous mode even parity is enabled two stop bits are required the data site to be received is 8 bit character length the frequency is 160 kilohertz for receiving the baud rate is 10 kilohertz. So now here the ratio is 160k divided by 10k, which will give us 16 cross 1 asynchronous mode. So first we have to configure the mode instruction register as the baud rate for the last two bits from the LSB. It specifies what is the baud rate and frequency ratio. So in this case it is 16 cross 1. So I am selecting the LSB 2 bits as 10. The next 2 bits are indicates what is the size of data. In the problem statement, it is given 8 bit character length. So we will configure these 2 bits as 11. Next, even parity is enabled. So for enabling the D4 bit, we have to write as 1. As it is even parity, the D5 bit will be configured as 1. And the number of stop bits are required are 2. So the MSB 2 bits are given as 11. So the mode instruction register the value which we are going to write is the last two bits as 11 from the MSB. Even parity, parity enabled, 8 bit character length, 16 cross 1, baud rate. So the value which we are going to be load into the mode instruction register is FE. This is in binary format, this is in hexadecimal. So this FE value we have to load into mode instruction register. After this, we have to configure the command instruction register. For command instruction register, for receiving of data. So transmitter enable is not required. DTR is not required as it is not corresponding to the modem. Receiver we have to enable. So we will write this bit is equal to 1. Send break character is not required. Clearing the error flags we will take. RTS is not required as it is not a modem transfer. Internal reset is not specified. Hunt characters are not specified. So the value which we are going to be write into the command instruction register as 0001. One is for clearing the error flags. The second bit is for enabling the receiver. So the bit format it is 0001 which is 1H hexadecimal representation. In the binary format 0100 its equivalent hexadecimal is 4. So the value which we are going to be write into the command instruction control word is 14H. Now we will start the program. First, requesting for segment for code using assume directive. Assume CS colon code. Starting of 
code segment using segment directive code segment first we have to place the address into the corresponding registers this is 3000 or 4000 so 3000 we are going to be load into ds register as immediate data cannot be loaded into data segment register so first 3000 will be loaded into ax register from the ax register it will be loaded into data segment registers using move ds comma ax next 4000h this will be placed in the source index register si by using move instruction move si comma 4000h so these two instructions are for placing the pointer using ds colon si 3000 colon 4000 the size of data which we are transmitting the number of bytes which we are transmitting is 100 so here the number of bytes we are transmitting or we are receiving is 100 bytes so the total number of values you can take as 64h in the hexadecimal so that we are going to be load into cx register after this we have to configure the mode instruction control word the value which we are going to be write for mode instruction register is feh for loading feh into mode instruction register fe first we will load into al register so move al comma feh this al contains we want to load into mode instruction register by using out instruction so out mode instruction address comma al the next one is we have to configure the command instruction register with the value of 14h so for loading into the command instruction register first we will place the 14h into al register by using move instruction so move al comma 14h this al contains now it will be transferred to command instruction register by using out instruction out command instruction address comma al so now this set of instructions for configuring both mode instruction register and command instruction register the next step is we want to read the status register for reading the status register we use in al comma status register in the status register first we will check whether any errors are there or not as well as receiver is ready these two things we have to check for checking whether there are errors are there or not In the status register the third bit the fourth bit and the fifth bit are required for checking whether there are any errors are occurred during receiving point one is for parity error this is over frame error or overrun error this is framing error so now we are interested for checking only three bits the remaining bits are not required so we are going to be and these two bits are zero zero I want to find out whether these three bits are zero or not. If it is zero, there are no errors. If it is non-zero, it indicates at least one error is exist. So you can clear off them. Whereas the last three bits are zero, zero. So now whatever the value which we are read, that is AL register contents, which is occupied with the status registers, we are going to be and AL with zero, 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 one, 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 zero, zero. That is 38h the purpose of ending with the 38h is it is for checking whether errors are there or not when you are receiving during receiving whether there are errors or not there so whenever you and the al contents with 38h if the result is zero if the result is zero it indicates there are no error then you can go for checking whether receiver is ready or not then we can receive the data suppose if it is non-zero that indicates some errors are occurred that it will be reflected in the error flag so and al comma 38h then we will check whether errors are occurred or not if there are errors are not there then you can go for checking whether receiver is ready or not so here we will check whether it is j and z or not if it is jz 
that means if the results are zero there are no errors so we will go for label two suppose if this condition is fails if condition is fails that indicates some errors are occurred as some errors are occurred again we have to configure the command instruction register for clearing the errors with 14h so move al comma 14h this we are going to be write into command instruction register command instruction register comma al next once it is cleared then we go for checking the status register again for receiver is enabled or not for checking the receiver is enabled or not we have to check the third bit which is the receiver is enabled or not for checking the readiness of the receiver we are going to be and with 0 to h this is for transmitter enabled which we don't require the remaining bits are also not required we are interested for only whether receiver is enabled or not so the bit pattern we will get as 0 0 0 0 0 2 0 refer the status register where the receiver enabled is there so here we are going to be and with al comma 0 to h so now if this result when you are adding the al contains with the 0 to h if the result is 0 that indicates the receiver is not ready when the receiver is not ready go for reading status register again if result is non zero if result is non zero it indicates the receiver is ready so that the data can be collected so now here we will write the instruction if the result is zero it indicates the receiver is not ready again go for reading the status register so here you will write the instruction is j z l2 after adding al with 0 to if the result is 0 indicate the receiver is not ready so again go for reading the status register so these three instructions will be executed repeatedly until the receiver is ready when the receiver is ready we can collect the data into the al register using in instruction so for reading the data from the receiver we can have in al comma receiver address whatever the data which we read into al register that will be copied into the memory location so for that you write move in brackets si comma al so the al which is containing the received data that data will be moved into the memory as one data is received for pointing to the next memory location we go for incrementing si as one data transaction is done decrement cx register so this loop has to be iterated until the cx count is equivalent to zero so if it is cx is not zero that indicates some more data we want to receive so for that we go for looping to the label one by using j and z instruction once all the data is received as per problem statement we had to receive 100 bytes of data once hundreds of byte, uh, bytes of data is received the cx content is zero then the loop j and z instruction will be terminated we can outcome outside of the loop and we can end the program by calling interrupt 21h with 4ch into ah move ah comma 4ch int 21h we can end the code segment by using code end s and we can end the program by using end stopped so this is a program for receiving of 100 bytes of data using 8251 USA RT with the given specifications. Now we will see the entire receiver program at a glance. Write an ALP to receive 100 bytes of data starting at the location 3000 colon 4000 H. Assume CS colon code, code segment, start move AX comma 3000 H, move ds comma ax move si comma 4000 h so the first three instructions are for pointing to the memory at address 3000 colon 4000 h as we want to receive 100 bytes of data 
this 100 bytes of data we are going to be stored into the CX register. The 100 bytes equivalent is 64H in hexadecimal. The next one is we have to configure the mode instruction register for configuring the mode instruction register with the specifications. We are getting the value is FEH. This FEH value is loaded into mode instruction register through out instruction. After configuring mode instruction register, the next next one is we have to configure the command instruction register. For configuring command instruction register, the value is 14H. One is for clearing the errors and the one is for enabling the receiver. Our command instruction register comma AL. Then we will read the status register. The first status register we are reading for check any error is there or not. There are three types of errors will occur during the receiving time. One is a framing error. Next overrun error. The third one is parity error. So if any one of these error is occurred, then we have to clear them. Otherwise we can go for checking the readiness of the receiver. So and AL comma 38H, it is for identifying the three flags, error flags, whether they have set or reset. If any flag is set, after ending, we will get the value is non-zero. If there are no errors, then it is going to return to zero. So if it is zero, we are going to be go for checking the readiness of the receiver. Suppose if Anding AL with 38 is non-zero, that means some error is occurred. So we are going to be clear the errors again by using 14H. So these two instructions are for clear errors if any error flag is set in status register. Next, for checking the readiness of the receiver, we are going to read the status register and AL comma 0 to H. These are for checking the readiness of the receiver. If receiver is not ready, it will be looped into the loop to. Once the receiver is ready, then we can read or we can receive the data. Receive the data into AL register that we are going to be load into the memory, copy to memory. As one data is received for pointing to the next memory location, increment SI. As one data transaction is done, decrement CX. If CX is non zero, go for the same steps again. Until 100 times this loop has to be iterated because we want to receive 100 bytes of data. Once 100 bytes of data is received, we can come out of this loop and we can terminate the program by using move ah, 4ch, int 21h, code end s and end start. Right. So this is program for receiving of 100 bytes of data with the given specifications into the given a targeted memory location. Thank you all. So in this session, we have discussed the interfacing of 8251 USART Universal Synchronous Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter with 8086. Two programs we have done. One is for transmission of 100 bytes of data. The second one is receiving of 100 bytes of data with the given specifications. Thank you all. If you have any query, you can put on the comment session. Thank you once again. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.